friends. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? Today's video is going to be different <laughs> than normal videos uh, because today we are going to be talking about police brutality, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, the murder of George Floyd, and a plethora of other issues uh, that have been plaguing the Black community in America since the first Black slave was brought here in the 1600s. I, there's a couple of disclaimers to this video. The first disclaimer is that all of the AdSense, if this video is monetized, every single cent of ad revenue that I make from this video will be going to the Black Lives Matter movement. There is literally no way in hell that I would keep money that is talking about something as serious as this. So if you do see ads, know that I am not profiting off of that. As a white woman in America, I absolutely have a very high level of privilege to be speaking on these issues. I am not in any way, shape, or form trying to say that these are issues that affect me daily um, because they don't, and that's the problem. So the goal of this video is to amplify the voice of people that I have heard and also to come from a place of education to kind of dismantle certain arguments that I've seen that go against the Black Lives Matter movement and what's happening in America right now. A few days ago, a man named George Floyd was murdered by the police. The video circulated all over social media. He was pinned down by the cops and with a knee on his neck. He was choked for over nine minutes, three of those which he didn't have a pulse. Um, and they stayed there even after he didn't have a pulse for three minutes. And... We saw this video um, as a country, and this came right after what happened in Central Park, which was that a woman threatened to call the police on a man because he asked her to leash her dog, and in the video is shown saying, I'm going to tell the police that an African-American man is threatening me, and gets on 911 and says, there's an African-American man threatening me. We see her in that video weaponizing uh, what we already know to be true as as just a society in America, we already know to be true that to be a black man or a black woman in this country puts a target on your back for the police. This is not a new issue. This is not a new problem. This is not something that is like coming out of the woodwork that we've never heard of before. We hear stories of m groups of police officers breaking into homes and gunning down people while they're sleeping. Uh, when it turns out they just oopsie got the wrong house, uh, like with Breonna Taylor, and those cops are still out walking around. Since everything has started with George Floyd, the officers involved, uh, the first officer who had his knee on his neck, Officer Chauvin, has been charged with second degree murder and is currently in custody. And the other three officers who were there, two of which helped pin him down, one of which stood aside and just watched it happen and didn't even try to intervene or stop what was happening even after he didn't have a pulse uh, all three of them have also been arrested and are facing charges so we're seeing a slight progress we're seeing a slight change uh, mind you it took every single one of the 50 states in america hundreds of people protesters going to jail unjustly police brutality happening just everywhere po cops running into people cops beating people on bicycles like it's taken uh, people losing their lives getting shot with rubber bullets that are actually lethal if they're shot at the right place it took all of that for four cops to face the justice that they should have been facing the entire time. And we still have cops now who have recently murdered innocent black people. Just flat out, there's no way to say it. It's not police brutality. It's not, it's murder. They're murdering people and they're still out walking free. So Americans have now, a, a lot of Americans have taken to the streets and we have had almost a, I think over a week now, straight of protests. Um, and in some cases those have turned into riots. And in some, I don't like to call them riots though, I'm not gonna lie. We've had peaceful protests and we've had a lot of things going on. And through all of this, our president uh, has done nothing and said nothing to try and unify our country and has instead threatened people who are protesting, deployed the National Guard to a bunch of different states when he legally does not have the jurisdiction to do so, and tear gassed protesters by the White House who were peaceful and using their First Amendment right of freedom of speech, peaceful protesters, he tear gassed them and pushed them back so he could have a photo op. So he could walk from his White House to a church. The White House, which by the way, has like so many fences up around it right now because people literally want to burn it to the ground. If you are surprised by this, you have not been paying attention. There is an extensive 
detailed history of the racial inequalities that take place in America on a day-to-day -day basis and police are just like one part of that problem. If I seem angry in this video it's because I am. I'm angry. I'm angry that my president called people who were peacefully protesting thugs. I'm angry that there are people currently out there fighting for their right to live. Live peacefully. Live without fear of being murdered. I'm pissed. Yeah I'm and pissed, really pissed that this is the world that we still live in and that people beg for their lives to matter. And that's where we're going to start is the first response that I always get inevitably whenever anybody, I, anybody says black lives matter. That should not be a controversial statement. It's not a controversial statement and it shouldn't be one. The first response that I always hear to black lives matter, all lives matter. Let's break that down really quick. All lives matter. Great. So you're also saying that black lives matter or are you saying that black lives don't fall into the category of all lives? I'm a little confused by that. Okay. So all lives do matter and nobody's saying that they don't. However, the black community is currently under assault. All lives will matter when all black lives matter. It's not a complicated topic in my opinion. The best analogy I've seen used for it is say that my house is on fire and I'm like hey guys I have to go put out this fire right now will you guys come help me and you're like mm, I actually can't help you because by saying that your house needs attention right now you're devaluing that my house needs attention and it's like well my house is on fire so I don't understand why you can't come help me with the fire like my house is currently burning to the ground and yours is fine and you're like well my house kind of needs an upgrade I need money to pay for my house and I don't have money to pay for my house so I have issues too so by saying that your house is on fire but mine like needs kind of an upgrade too you're telling me that my house doesn't matter that's what you sound like when you're saying that white people have problems too yes there is class inequality yes there is uh, there's so many yes there's so many inequalities that white people also face you're not currently being murdered as a result of that if you actually believe that all lives matter equally then you should have z and you actually believe what you're spewing with the all lives matter rhetoric that's happening then you should have no problem also agreeing that black lives matter you should have no issues saying that what you're saying is the same thing but what all lives matter has turned into is all lives matter except for the black community that's what that phrase has turned into another one of the myths somewhat that i've seen is well black people have higher crime rates they're just at, they're just more violent people the black community is just more violent so that's why all of this is happening that's why police kill them at a higher rate is because they're inherently more violent first of all i would just like to say that i cannot sum up that whole situation in this youtube video there you could literally get a degree in why that is the way that it is but to put it as best as i possibly can the black community is not inherently more violent. A lot of people like to pull crime statistics. They like to say, well, look, there's more white people in jail than black people. So the police aren't targeting black people. First of all, the number is almost the same. According to the most recent census, we have 76.5% of people who live in America are white people. The percentage of black people that live in America are 13.4%. Hi, it's editing me. There was a situation, there was a little bit of a miscommunication I feel with what I said previously so I just want to make it abundantly clear what I'm talking about. So this is what's known as overrepresentation. The African American community is overrepresented in the prison system for a plethora of reasons that I'm about to explain. But what's really important to realize here is that just because more of the black community is incarcerated than more of the white community does not mean that black people commit more crimes. What it means is that they are more likely to fall victim to a racially biased justice system. Our justice system has been proven time and time again to unfairly target the black community and that is the point that I'm trying to make here. Our country became desegregated not even a hundred years ago. We have probably two maybe three generations of the black community who have been able to even attempt to go to college, who have been able to even attempt to ma amass wealth, amass any sort of wealth that they can have, who can even own land, because for a long time they couldn't own land, who can run for office. We've only had two solid generations of the black community that can do that. White people 
we've had we've had all of time to amass wealth. We've had all of time to get educated. We've been able to go and get educated whenever we wanted to. We've been able to go buy homes at really cheap prices to pass down to our kids. We have been able to do all of those things. We have over-policing in black communities. We have laws that were specifically made to impact the black community disproportionately. Our justice system disproportionately affects the black community. Racial bias amongst police officers disproportionately affects the black community. The reason you see so many kids who are black go to jail on drug charges is not because white people aren't doing drugs. It's because they're policing black neighborhoods significantly more than they're policing white neighborhoods. The charges that they get are 10 times more severe. And that's the other rhetoric I see. Well, if they're breaking the law, then the police, this is what I'm seeing around George Floyd, especially, and other black men and women who have been murdered by the police. They're like, well, if they're breaking the law, then the police, you know, can take action how they see fit. Okay, well, tell that to Tamir Rice, who was a 12-year-old child who was murdered by the police for holding a water gun. Tell that to George Floyd, who was murdered by the police, held down and suffocated by the police over allegedly having a counterfeit $20 bill that turned out to not even be fake. The biggest problem problems that we're having right now is that the police are allowed to be the jury, the judge, and the executioner, and they are now just allowed to murder people on suspicion, and they get away with it, and that's part of the problem. And then in respect to the protests, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, the police are tear gassing people, they're shooting rubber bullets at them that are causing people to go blind. Yeah, they're doing all that, but the protesters, they're breaking the law. They shouldn't be out past curfew. They shouldn't be meeting up when it's illegal to do so. There have been so many things in history that have been illegal to do and that doesn't mean that they're right. I don't know why this is a hard concept to understand. It was legal to kill somebody because they were dating somebody who was the same sex. Legal to lynch black men because they were accused of winking at a white woman. It was legal to have slaves. It was legal to force the black community to use a different water fountain. It was legal to make them give up their seats on a bus because you wanted to sit down and you were white. All of those things were legal. That doesn't mean they're right. Just because something is legal does not mean it is morally right. We have laws written into place in our country right now that are based in systemic racism. Just because these cops are allowed to be tear gassing people and allowed to be shooting at them, just because they're allowed to do those things, doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it morally okay to shoot at, for the most part, peaceful protesters. And that's the other thing I would like to bring up as a white person. If you're also a fellow white person and you're attending these rallies, because I'm seeing a ton of this on Twitter, if you are a white person attending these rallies, attending these protests, and you, you are the one instigating violence. You are the one smashing cop cars or lighting them on fire or starting to loot things. If you are a white person doing that, go home. Go home. The black community has every single right to be angry. They have every single right to smash whatever target they want, in my personal opinion. I am not going to sit here and police the way that the black community handle these situations. What I am going to do is tell all of these privileged little white kids coming from the suburbs just so they can loot a van store to go home because you're hurting the movement. You're hurting things that are so much bigger than you that you obviously don't even conceptually understand. If you're going to a protest and you're a white person, this is so important. I feel like nobody's freaking talking about it. If you're a white person, you're going to these protests, listen to the black voices. You are not there to be the center of attention. This is not about us. This is not about you. This is about the black community and we are there to support. We are there to give support. We are not there to lead the movement. I'm so sick of seeing white kids ruining protests because they want to tag a police car or they want to smash something. It's not your right to do that. If you're nervous to post something because you're like, well, I'm scared I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm scared I'm going to make people upset. Say the wrong thing and then just listen. There was the Blackout Tuesday that was supposed to happen a couple days ago and it started out, I believe, with good intentions of it. It was supposed to be white people, you know, stop posting your own personal selfies and BS and uplift the voices of black creators. That's what it was supposed to be. And I think it turned into posting a black square on your Instagram 
um, you know, to be, to say that you're caring, you know, which I believe a lot of people did care. I posted the black square because I thought that's what we were supposed to be doing. And then I was told by members of the black community, hey, this isn't helpful. This actually hurts us because valuable information from the Black Lives Matter movement is being overwhelmed because of the posts that are being made. So I deleted all of my posts and I um, amended them and said, okay, actually, this isn't what people want right now. And I saw that on so many influencers and celebrities pages who posted that black square of people being like, please take this down, please, it's not helpful. And people wouldn't do it. <laughs> they don't want to listen. I think there's this real complex right now of people saying, I don't want to seem like I was wrong when it comes to these issues. I don't want to admit that I was wrong about something. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to do the wrong thing. It's okay if you're trying to learn. Don't be purposely a dick, but like, it's okay to uh, say, hey, that wasn't really working. I'm going to take that down and not support that. So if you're wrong, it's okay to be wrong, but correct and learn. That is the only way this is going to get better. Don't get frustrated. And now I'm seeing this discourse of white people being like, well, we can never do anything right. Just listen. It's not hard. It's really, really not. I promise you it's not hard. And the problem is I know that by making this video, and by talking about all of this, people are gonna be like, oh, that's smoky glow. She's just virtue signaling. She's just so fake woke. She's, you're part of the fing problem. Shaming people who are speaking up about this, shaming anyone who is speaking up about this and trying to use their platforms by saying their virtue signal. I'm seeing this all over the place. It's driving me absolutely bananas. Saying that someone's virtue signaling or saying they're fake woke for trying to use their platform to talk about something, you're part of the problem. You are shaming and diminishing people who are trying to speak up about the injustices and inequalities that the black community faces and you're part of the problem. Hi, editing me again. Um, I need multiple takes. I just want to be abundant clear here because I think there is room to interpret what I'm saying the wrong way. If you are post, it's perfectly fine to post things and support things as a white person and you know it's not virtue signaling, it's not any of the things I just mentioned, but it also is important to note, I know I said this already but I want to really reiterate it, it is so important to not overstep the black community and not overshine what they are doing, not overtake with the message that they are putting out there. Black voices and black opinions come first when it comes to this issue and white allies come after that. So while I'm saying be out there, be present, do not overshine and overstep what the black community is doing and saying because that is not your role as an ally. If you are not actively shaming white supremacists, shaming the police officers who kill people, if you are not out outwardly shaming racism, you are a part of it now. That's the point we're at. I feel like for so long the white community has been like, well, as long as we're not racist and like personally we're not racist, then we're not, everything's fine. It's not fine. I even used to think like that. I even used to think it was enough for me to just not be racist myself. I didn't need to get into all of that. I'm just a white person. I don't need to get into all of that. It's not true. Use the voices that you have. Use the privilege that you have as a white person and speak up and stop shaming others for doing so because that makes you a part of the problem. It's not virtue signaling to stand up for basic human rights. The other thing I would like to mention is that I'm seeing a lot of white creators being just praised for speaking up praised. I'm probably going to get praise for making this video and I don't want praise. I don't want people to be like, thank you, Hannah, queen. I am doing the bare minimum by using my platform to make this video. The bare minimum. I am doing what is expected and what all people with platforms should be doing. I don't want praise for anything I am doing. I want you to go vote. These protests have been so monumental and so helpful and they're going to continue, I think, for a while. What we need is macro level systemic change and we are not going to get that with our current president. That will never happen with our current president. We will have four more years of seeing zero systemic change. You guys know if you've been watching me for a long time that at the end of all my videos I urge you to register to vote and this entire time I've been doing that I have tried very hard to just say vote. Do, do, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to try to get too political. All of those things, right? Now I am telling you 
do not vote for Donald Trump. Register to vote and use your vote for a different candidate. I understand that Joe Biden is not very appealing. I understand. I don't really like him either, to be perfectly honest. I don't really stand by a lot of the things he believes in either, to be perfectly honest. But if you're comparing him to Donald Trump, maybe something can start to happen. He's our only option right now, unfortunately. Realistically, he's our only option. He is the only way that he, we can even start the conversation around something happening. I get that he is also not an ideal candidate. I get it. I was Bernie all the way. Like I 100% get it. But he is a start to something. Right now there's currently a huge public discourse around mail-in voting that is saying that it opens us up for fraud and that it makes it easier for people to commit voter fraud and that is simply not true. I'll link some resources down below that explain it really well of why that is literally not the case. If you live in a state that allows you to get a mail-in ballot, get it now. If you live in a state that is considering mail-in ballots, call your legislators and demand them. We are still, despite everything else going on, in the middle of a pandemic. And to ask people to go to a voting booth in November when we will still be in the middle of that pandemic, forcing people to make the decision of getting sick and potentially dying or voting is not fair. It infringes on our basic human right to vote. Voting is supposed to be easy to understand, easy to access, and frankly, it is not. Getting him out is the start of this. This is gonna be a long fight, but that is the start, in my opinion, is getting him out of office. The final thing I wanna say, I know that right now a lot of people are giving money, um, and I've personally given money the past week. I gave 10% of my last AdSense check um, to different causes and donations, and I'm trying my best to use the money that I have been gifted because of this platform to help my friends who are in the black community. I'm trying, you know. Um, what I would recommend people do if you have the capability of doing so is to sign up for reoccurring donations for a lot of these organizations because a lot of them are getting flooded with funding right now. But in a month, because of the way the news cycle works, because of the way America works, in a month, they might not be getting as much support. So I am pledging that for every, the first $200 that I make every month on this channel, all of that is going to be donated immediately to reoccurring funds. So I'm pledging $200 a month, which is what I can comfortably do right now. If I can do more in the future, I will. Do what's comfortable for you. Even if it's $20 a month to one organization, a reoccurring payment could absolutely benefit these organizations in ways that we can't even understand. So if you have the ability to do reoccurring donations, I would strongly recommend it. I wish I could end this video on a positive note and be like, oh guys, it's gonna get better. Everything's gonna, you know, it's all gonna be fine. Everything's gonna work out. There's a positive spin. There's not. There's going to be years and years and years of fighting and activism and policy reform. And there are probably more murders, more protests. It's gonna get worse, in my opinion, before it gets better, but something has to change. I'm okay with large scale justice reform and you should be as well. Um, I posted this on my community tab, but I'm gonna post it in the description of this video as well, of a list of resources that I got from the University of Michigan Social Work Department that is a pretty comprehensive list of not only ways you can donate, but ways you can just help if you don't have the money. I know I talked a lot about money in this video, but there are ways to help that doesn't require donating. So if you need another way to help, you can text different locations, you can sign petitions, call your local legislators. That is like the number one thing I can recommend people doing. I know as like millennials, we don't wanna talk on the phone, but like call your local legislators. It's really not that hard. I've been doing it, it doesn't take that long. And every voice that we can push to our legislators does actually help. I'm gonna start posting more normal content soon, um, but I didn't feel like I could start doing that or like it would be right to start doing that before making a video like this addressing everything that's happening and i hope i did an okay job of addressing it and if i didn't <laughs> let me know all right i love you guys keep fighting keep getting out there i am with you i support you and i will see you in the next one